Previous DHS videos have highlighted a variety of safety concerns facing American institutions and the steps that can be taken to mitigate these threats. This video builds on those lessons by focusing on the dynamic threats facing America's houses of worship across faiths and the experts who deal with these challenges every day, beginning with the Department of Justice's Community Relations Service and Harpreet Singh Mocha. My uh, stance has always been is to be proactive and be prepared. We want people to feel safe and we want people to uh, report and communicate more with law enforcement, whether they be from uh, the Department of Homeland Security, whether it be from FBI, whether it be the Department of Justice. If you're a place of worship and you have a couple of other places of worship, maybe a church here and a synagogue and a, um, a mosque all on the same street, find out you know what are the issues that they're facing. As a group, uh, you can work together to uh, secure your premises. It's been done, it's continuing to be done, and we can, at the Community Relations Service, we can help them create a plan and do that. You know, one of the things that I've seen where congregations who have been able to uh, really develop a really holistic plan are ones where they're really engaging with everyone in their community. You know, so one of the things that I would encourage is that they get involved with their local emergency managers. Get to know, you know, your first responders. And one of the things oftentimes that churches and other houses of worship are surprised by is that many of those agencies actually would be willing to come out for free and take part of a day and walk around the facility and just help make good changes and would really encourage that kind of interdisciplinary approach to getting prepared because each of those different groups that I mentioned are going to have different ways of thinking about this issue. I went in and did training at our Tree of Life synagogue. We talked about that just as we have done every one of our trainings and we talked about hey what are we going to do in a worst case scenario and unfortunately it's exactly what happened in that building. In that it wasn't so much a wake-up call as a call to action. It was a recognition that no matter where you are or how much you do, bad things can happen and we need to be prepared for it. Working in partnership between local, state, and federal government with our other stakeholders, with other faith-based communities, what we've been able to do is work to really increase the level of preparedness for our community so that they know how we're training and preparing for active threat, active uh, attacks, and we also have an opportunity to hear from them as to how they're going to respond so that there's a full understanding of that. And that familiarity, that understanding allows for more effective response and it allows us to build communities of trust between the faith-based community and law enforcement. You more often than not fall back to your level of training. And that's what we have to do. We have to train and empower the community. But when do houses of worship need to consider their physical security? For experts like Dr. Reverend Miriam Burnett, ordained near the Emanuel AME Church, the process can never begin too soon. I was ordained with Clemente Pinckney, and he and I are very good friends. We were scheduled to have dinner the very next week at our general board. It was just hard. The ripple effect across the AME Church was just tremendous. And every year, we look back and say, we remember. We remember the Emanuel Nine. After looking at several disasters that have had both natural and man-made, um, it became essential to me that we develop a plan. How do we respond? How do we recover? How do we keep people uh, moving in the right direction? We want to be here for people, but we also have to protect ourselves. People of faith are resilient. We have several things in common, but one of them is that our faith gives us the ability to stand back up again. And when we do that collectively, we're better for it. When I look at those shared values, whether they're American values or shared religious values, the amount that we do hold true overrides um, any of our differences. Standing with our non-Muslim neighbors is a big deal. The Jewish community has been targeted for things that the Muslim community has not been targeted for. Um, our Sikh community has also been targeted for things that we have not been targeted for. That doesn't make it any different. And in all of those instances, we come together and we stand together and we stand united. While houses of worship face a number of unique challenges, they also possess a unique perspective into their communities. 
In collaboration, many believe that engagement with local communities can be an effective tool in mitigating hate-based crime targeting faiths. Oftentimes what we're seeing is that some of those instances are being traced back to hate crime types of issues or significant biases or prejudice that people may have against a particular religious group or, or faith community. Over the course of the last few years, we've seen um, a steadily rising trend of mosques around the country that are being targeted by hate. But on the flip side, we've also seen a lot of support for houses of worship as well. We've seen um, an unprecedented display of solidarity amongst diverse faith communities who are coming together and who are pledging to protect one another against hatred. You, you feel uh, sort of an underlying angst that has definitely increased within our community, uh, but at the same time, uh, an incredible outpouring of support uh, from the surrounding community. The tension between being welcoming and being secure is certainly, uh, is certainly a tough one. Uh, you know, so you want to be welcoming, um, not just to the surrounding communities, but also it's often better when it's uh, people who are already in the community uh, assisting uh, the security uh, personnel, knowing what's normal, what's not normal, what's from a particular culture, what's not from a culture. Uh, that sort of thing. So there, it's nuanced. If we can love those that are hurting in our community and catch people early on when they are showing signs of trouble and of struggling, that the more we can do to provide support, the more that we can help prevent perhaps somebody going down this path. You know, we're leaning on our Jewish brothers and sisters to say, hey, we really need you in our time of need, or making sure that our Sikh community is not getting targeted for wearing turbans. We're all there for each other. Education and information leads to tolerance. In 2012, trauma therapist Pardeep Singh Kalika lost his father in a shooting targeting the congregation of the Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Today, Kalika performs lectures with a reformed white supremacist examining the nature of hate crimes in an attempt to engage with at-risk individuals. Uh, the Sikh temple attack happened on August 5th, 2012. Uh, a white supremacist shot and killed six people. Um, uh, one of those people was my father and temple president. He died in the place that he helped build. And with that, there's a sense of like anger, frustration. And I remember other congregations getting out of Sunday service that, that, that Sunday. The mandir coming, you have people from the synagogue, the, the masjid, the mosque, you know, the, the church, even in the depths of, of, of anger and sadness, all, you never forget how people show up for you in your times of vulnerability. What we're doing now is a continuation of the six lives lost, and we'll address hate every single time it comes to our doorstep or into our place of sanctuary. We will, we will respond with love, we will respond with compassion, and we will respond with forgiveness. And that forgiveness means that we are not going to lose track of who we are and what we represent to this American fabric and to, to the world. And so when, when places of prayer are attacked, uh, you really attack the fabric of that particular community. Continue to do what you need to do. Continue on your mission. All we're saying is just be a little careful. Uh, keep uh, an awareness um, uh, of who's coming in and just be a little more enlightened about, hey, there are some issues that are beyond our control that we need to take steps to address. The experts featured in this video have outlined a number of steps individuals can undertake to secure houses of worship across the United States. These efforts may begin with outreach to federal and local law enforcement, as well as introducing physical security measures, including, but not limited to, security cameras, personnel on site, and conducting physical risk assessments to identify potential gaps. Finally, engaging the community in an effort to build partnerships and identify individuals who may be in crisis before they engage on the pathway to violence. DHS's Hometown Security Initiative provides resources like this video and other programs to empower communities to connect, plan, train, and report for proactive preparedness. Other valuable partners include the FBI, FEMA, and Department of Justice who are all ready and willing to help you reach your security goals.